Welcome to another episode of Roll or Die. Uh, we are on our mission to talk to every Australian female black belt in, uh, that we can. So we have for you today another one of those. She is the co-owner and head coach at One Purpose BJJ. She is the wife of Bob Frears, who we've had on previously. And uh, she is one of my good friends. She is Tegan Karup. Thanks for joining us, Tegan. No worries. Thanks for the invitation, guys. Awesome. And we can see, like, in the background of your TV, there's a reflection on the wall of a, of like, a photo. Is oh, that yeah. you and Bob? <laughs> there's, whole, there's a whole, like, hang on, I'll turn. Where are we? Aww. There's a whole wall. Oh, love. Yeah. Love yeah. Is the <laughs> Of our journey. <laughs> we like to reflect and see where we've been, what we've done. So That's we put brilliant. it all up on the wall. You're the best. I also really admire someone who will show us a look at their bedroom when they haven't cleaned it up. Like, that's me too. You know, like, <laughs> I'm totally comfortable with, like, this is... Yeah, I don't notice that. that. I, I didn't even notice that. Oh. <laughs> You're the best, Tegan. You rock. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so another thing, um, Tegan and I have been sharing. I mean, we've shared, we've competed. I don't think we competed at white or blue, but we, no. um, we definitely competed oh. at purple, brown, and black. Yeah. So, yeah, it's awesome to have a, a fellow Australian female that at a black belt level that is competing a lot. However, neither of us have been able to even be on the mats all that much over the last few months because we've been sharing our own injury journey. So, oh. I don't know, should we okay. start with that? How, um, how are you going? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's It's been a pretty hectic two years, to be honest. Um I would say I was at my absolute fittest and strongest before I fell pregnant with Otavio. Mm. And then after his birth, like basically nothing went to plan. <laughs> um, I was planning on being back in the mat on the mats within six weeks, sort of thing, six to eight weeks, natural birth. Um, had to have a cesarean that had it all of its own complications in itself. Um had to learn how to use my abs again, work my legs with my abs together um, and build all of that up again. And then when I started feeling good from that, my shoulder started going. Um, wow. And I think what started that was holding Otavio so much. Um, but I wish I could say some really cool jujitsu related accident. Um <laughs> But six years ago, I fell off Bob's skateboard. Ah. That was the original injury. I tore my supraspinatus. Was but alcohol it was a involved? Tear. Sorry? Was alcohol involved? No, no. See, I have a, I have a healthy respect for superstitions. I'm yeah. born on the 13th. Yeah. And, I mean, it's lucky for some, unlucky for others. And I don't go out of my way to do stupid things on that date. And I was like, listen, and so every six years, I have a birthday on Friday the 13th. Oh. And on that year, I'm like, I'm not going to. You guys go for a ride. Not going to do it today. And then I went out the next day. So it was the 14th, Saturday the 14th. Yeah. And I fell so hard off the skateboard. <laughs> Luckily, though, for jiu-jitsu, I did a big break fall on the concrete, saved my head because I would have cracked my head open for sure yeah. um, and just took all the impact through my shoulder. And so yeah. that was the beginning of my shoulder issue, <laughs> which was then exacerbated probably with six years of jiu-jitsu competition and then a baby. Yeah, mm, amazing. So, is your advice not to have children? Is that and not to ride skateboards? Is that is that is that our takeaway? Or, or is live your life. It's a podcast. <laughs> <Live your> life. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some of my worst injuries kicking coffee tables. Like I broke a tub kicking a coffee table. Yeah. Not even jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, I totally. Jujitsu is a safe sport, you know, in comparison to life. <laughs> Life is a dangerous <laughs> sport. Jiu-jitsu is safe. I'm with you right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. I've actually had four <laughs> skateboard accidents. I've had four skateboard accidents as well, and every time I have done jujitsu related stuff on, on the fall, and I should have definitely broken parts if I hadn't have had that. Like Supermaning through the air, they're electric skateboards too, so I really relate to 
Jiu-jitsu yeah. works for falling in normal life circumstances, 100% agree. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I definitely couldn't backward roll or anything, and I had no forward projection to do a forward roll. It was mm-hmm. just quickly take the impact the best I could yes, on concrete. absolutely, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. So, Tegan, you had surgery on your shoulder? What happened? Yeah, so um, after that, I, I approached it conservatively. I did so much rehab um, and it just wasn't really getting better. I couldn't lift my arm above 90 degrees. The pain was horrendous, affecting my sleep. And then I had an MRI and they told me that the supraspinatus was completely torn. Mm. Um, and there was also a... 4.2 by 4.3 centimetre, no, not centimetre, yes, centimetre, cyst living under my front delt. Wow. Um, and that could have been from the original impact and a hematoma that's just sort of appeared and encapsulated over time. Um, and so they went in, reattached my supraspinatus with four anchors into the bone. I believe my bone is supposed to munch those up over the next 12 to 18 months and the tendon just reattaches to my bone. Um, And then they did a bicep tenodesis as well. That's my my worst scar. I've got like five little keyholes around my shoulder and then, yeah, this one in here is the worst. So Mm. they took off my bicep tendon and reattached it into a better place and that resolved the cyst as well. So amazing. Yeah. The world we live in, that's so cool when you think about it. I know, it. yeah. <laughs> how's, the, how's the recovery been, like, especially with the toddler? Um, first six weeks, full on. Um, the first two weeks I was in horrendous pain. Um, I couldn't take the painkillers. I had a sensitivity to codeine, and um, which I'm now told is an allergy. Mm-hmm. Um, they tried to give me some other ones and I just started vomiting, like mm-hmm. couldn't stop. So it wasn't really worth it. But I was in like a whole other world of pain. Um, couldn't sleep either. So I was on the recliner downstairs because you can't lie flat, just feeling the falling of the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, my my bubba trying to come to me going, mom, mom. Yeah. <laughs> and then he would see my sling and he'd just look at it and then walk past me and go to Bob. <laughs> he he wised up pretty quickly, but that was really breaking my heart. Yeah. yeah. At least yeah. he didn't swing on the swing on it, you know. On the, hey, look at this. This looks like fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that would be like him, but no, he didn't. <laughs> he yeah. didn't, actually. <laughs> he is a little wild child. <laughs> yeah. Is he doing jujitsu yet? He sort of is. He plays with us on the mats. Yeah. Um, he's got really good evasive techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, two black belts in the house and sometimes we have trouble holding on to him. <laughs> he's good at bridging. He's really good at limp noodling. He'll just, like, weasel out of anything. Cool. And, I mean, you know, in jiu-jitsu, you don't want someone to move. You squeeze them a bit tighter. You can't do that to a baby. <laughs> That's true. That's good. I <laughs> that too. <laughs> you've got another son as well, Tegan. Yeah. Does he do jiu-jitsu? Yeah, so he's an orange white belt, no. Mateus. He's 14. We've got both ends of the spectrum. Mm. 18-month-old and 14-year-old. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I have a bit of a question because everybody says, you know, everybody says that childbirth. You know, no, nobody can understand the pain of childbirth. Well, a male can't, you know. So, like, when you, if you have this kind of surgery reconstruction and the t- type of pain you were in, like, is there a comparison for us men out there to kind of try and get a world of what kind of pain it's like? Um, yeah, I would say it was because it was relentless pain. Like, there was just no escaping it. Mm. Um, you could put it in that realm. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that like labor pains though are different because you feel the end is close. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Tegan Short and I emphasized a lot over those early weeks after our surgeries because you just don't know how much longer it's going to go on for. Yeah. Mm. Like, and it's, I guess, a labor pain is a kind of pain with a purpose. 
Mm. It felt like injury or you know, it's after incredible. surgery. What's the point now? I've done the surgery. Just get better already. Come yeah. on. Yeah. 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 That, and do you have like a fear like that the doctors have screwed this up and like I am going to like I'm not going to is, is it like do you go through all sorts of spaces like that is it, um, is it a, worry, a concern you I've definitely like five went hours surgery eight, wasn't it no. sorry Kim was it like five hours of surgery or something like that um I honestly I can't like remember eight. yeah no it was a, but it was a big thing like a shoulder reconstruction is like a yeah. really big surgery sorry sorry to interrupt go when I when I came out I had like a they called it a pain pack so I had the like the painkillers hooked up on an IV but they also had like a local anesthetic tube going into my shoulder as well Mm. so the first 24 hours while I was in hospital it was manageable like I was still in a lot of pain but it was manageable yeah and then once they took all of that out and sent me home that was when it was just hell broke loose. Lord, yeah. Okay. I can't even describe it. Yeah. Well, I mean, my longest labor with Mateus was 24 hours. That was pretty wild. But again, like I said, you get this incredible gift at the end. Yeah. <laughs> You're rewarded for all of that pain you just went through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, shoulder surgery was just, it was relentless. Yeah. And there was, no way to ease it there was no way to escape it Mm. it was just manage each moment each day and pray for an end I just kept saying it's only only temporary (laughs) wow yeah I really hope I never go through that I hope our listeners ever go through I hope you never have to go through that again on anybody yeah but but (laughs) coming out the other side of it um I'm grateful I did it yeah um Definitely working at getting stronger than it ever was. Um, mm. I've just started strengthening, like really strengthening. Um, most of it was rehab up until now, but now I'm like back into strength training mm. and I'm actually starting at a point where I was pre-surgery. So, mm. yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with it at the moment. A lot of other people that I've heard that have done this similar surgery said that it's the strongest part of their body. Mm. So that maybe, gives me a lot of hope. <laughs> maybe, maybe there is a gift and you will discover it. Maybe it's not like a short term as childbirth, but maybe there is like some massive gift coming that. Yeah. Uh, as Watch a out for my left arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. We'll have to watch your future matches to see. You've got this <laughs> power on. <laughs> yeah. And um, another, like, so Tegan, just switching tax a bit here, like you've, You've competed a lot, yeah. Like we've competed against each other a bit in Australia, and you've competed overseas as well. Like, yeah. can you tell us about that? You've been to Pans. I think you've been to World Masters. Um, yeah, I so I did Pans at Purple and Brown, and I did Worlds at Brown. Yeah, and Worlds Masters at Brown. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Tell us about those like preparations, those experiences, things like that? Um, yeah, it's it's something that, like, Bob and I really enjoy doing. We we like pushing ourselves. We like pushing the boundaries um, and setting some really exciting goals to work towards. Mm. So we'll always do, like, a few local comps and then nationals, PAM packs. Um, and, yeah, we just started going overseas in 2000 and. 17 I think 2017 2018 was when we really started picking it up um our preparation is like I've done it a couple of different ways I've tried like a 12 week a 10 week eight week prep um what feels best for me is about eight week I think now um I do plan on doing world's masters this year that's been put in I've been trying to get that's pretty soon uh, late August, early September. Oh, yeah, well, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So my whole team, my support team know about it. That's what we're working towards. My physio, my doctor, my surgeon. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think at the moment I would probably feel better with like a six to seven week. I think eight week might be getting a bit too much for me now. I need to bring it back a little to really peak when I go. Mm. Um, 
And yeah, so we just think sort of that's stepped. because of age. Can I? <laughs> sorry, I'm still way older than you. Don't 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 worry about that. <laughs> like, is it? Is that why, or is it? Um, is... I I think it's a couple of things. Um, it might be to do with that. Um, like that might have some contribution, but it's just how I feel physically and mentally. So, um, I get a little bit bored of doing the same thing over and over even though I've got like a big goal ahead of me um it can sort of start breaking down after six weeks Mm. Um, during the six weeks it's still very exciting I'm really hunting for it after that it becomes quite onerous and a real struggle um that's like my weight training things like that like I like changing it up mixing it up um, and that keeps it exciting for me. I don't really see the point in pushing through something that is so horrible to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, and in terms of the way my body responds as well. So that could be an age thing. Um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just after that sort of six-week mark, um, yeah, I need like a, a rest recovery and then boom, hit into the next one. Mm, yeah, it was psychological. Yeah, yeah, That's really interesting. No one's ever talked about experimenting with different like camp lengths to go and compete. I really, that's a fascinating conversation. And does Bob have this take the same kind of length as you, or do you guys are you guys independent in the lead up to comps? Do you work together? Yeah, no, we're pretty independent. We're we're very similar in a lot of ways, but then like with this sort of stuff, we're polar opposite. Like mm. I have a weekly diary I write stuff down I tick it off um I like doing that because I feel accomplished setting like little goals each day each week um and I also like will color code a calendar on my way there and I'll like um put days that I'm training a particular way Mm -hmm. days that I'm strength days that I'm drilling and yeah, I just break it up a little bit differently. I think he does something similar. He just doesn't write it down and doesn't really um, mind if it gets mixed up. Mm. You like but, to nerd out on the structure of it and he doesn't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I yeah. like it. Awesome. <laughs> and what is it like being in a, a partnership with your coach and, you know, competing together and training together and stuff? We sort of asked it of him, but yeah, interesting. Okay. <laughs> he said it was we horrible, have... and he just wouldn't have <laughs> given it up. <laughs> We've navigated a lot over the years. <laughs> um, the sharing the business would probably be the biggest because he's he's all analytical data numbers, mm. and I'm like spontaneous risk it for the biscuit. You know, right. it's like you're the opposite of the way you train for a comp is how you do business. And same for him. Yeah. That, yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, yeah, we really complement each other, but we butt heads a lot. Um, but we end up getting to a really good place because of the the two ends of the spectrum we're coming from. Mm. Um yeah, we've we've had a lot of things like um, when we're coming home from training, if we've both trained hard, if no food has been consumed, no <laughs> conversations to be had. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yeah. comes out of that. <laughs> yeah. There's no change yeah. around that so tunnel. I totally like understand. That we've yeah. had to learn along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about on comp day, like on in a situation where you're both competing on the same day? How is that? We get more nervous for each other than we get nervous for ourselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, like I'm I'm usually pretty bubbly and saying hello to everybody in the bullpen and he's like just so yes. serious and almost worried for me as well at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time was World Masters where we went on at exactly the same time. We couldn't watch each other's match. We couldn't corner each other. Um, that was interesting, but usually every other one we're able to see each other, watch each other. Um, yeah, I mean, it's nice to share. It can be stressful. We haven't really done it with both kids yet. That's going to be interesting. We really want to, but um, 
with the prices of flights and everything at the moment, it's almost trebled what it used mm. to be wow. three, four years ago. So, yeah, it's not quite worth it yet. But, yeah, we did World's Masters with Mateus with us. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's nice. It's fun to do. Can be a little yeah. bit stressful at times, but it is mm -hmm. it is a nice thing to share with each other. Yeah. yeah. And like I'm fascinated about like how we always ask how people discover jujitsu, but I'm also keen to know like when you and Bob like met, because you're both competitive creatures, like was yeah. you both already competing in jujitsu? Was that part yeah. of the attraction of the whole thing? Did one of you have to kind of prop the other one up? And like was one of you more or better at competing or is it like yeah we're both awesome so this is why this works like what was the dynamic of that <clears throat> yeah I think we we were both completely immersed in competition already mm -hmm. yeah yeah so when he got to Australia I think he'd been a black belt for a year or two and that was when he really started picking up his competition. Like I think he'd done eight or ten competitions a year from yeah. then. So yeah. it was pretty full on. Um, yeah. And I was purple belt at the time and I was similar. I think I'd done like 12 competitions. I'd almost been competing every month. So, yeah, we were doing the same thing when we met. Same awesome. kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. and that's great like if you meet someone and you, you, they're like your people you know what I mean you're both immersed in that that's a great way to kind of kick things off isn't it like I can see how that would work you know how that's very yeah. attractive to find someone else who's just as hungry to compete it's, it's awesome yeah and what about what about the first part of Angel's question like how did you find jiu-jitsu how did you discover it um so I've always been involved in a lot of martial arts it was primarily Muay Thai um so I think the interest came from my dad he's old school Zendukai he trained with Bob Jones wow I'm not sure if you know that name yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah um yeah. so yeah he I was like oh eight or something and practicing my nunchucks in the front yard and he'd make me bows and I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so <laughs> That was where all of that came from. But um, I got into Muay Thai first and where I was training at the time, um, it was just in a little church and I saw these guys like shrimping on the floor, didn't know it was called shrimping at the time. <laughs> and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, and I just turned up for a class and started, I think, within a day or two, I just, I caught the bug. It was pretty quick. Mm. <laughs> I loved it. It was really challenging and it just ticked all the boxes for me. Mm. Um, but I do have equal love for Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. I've never combined the two. Mm. Um, and I stopped Muay Thai because I didn't enjoy getting punched in the face anymore. Even though I know that's the whole name of the game, you're supposed to avoid <laughs> that. Yeah. You, you do eat quite a few along the way. Did you compete in Muay Thai? Pardon? Did you compete in Muay Thai or just train? I had two fights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one I gave away, I was desperate to fight. I gave away eight or nine kilos. Yeah. Um, and the day of weigh-in, it was fine. And then I turn up the next day and I'm like, that is not the girl that was here yesterday. Oh so not only did I give away eight kilos for the weigh-in, she had cut dramatically to get oh, to that. Wow. The time I saw her, um, yeah, she was massive, massive. Um, but I lasted ten, oh, I lasted five rounds, sorry, um, wow. and I got TKO'd in the last round. Wow. Um, and then my second fight I won by unanimous decision after five rounds. Yeah. Wow. And she was around my weight. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good. Well done. Wow. That must be really intimidating to know someone who's got like probably 12, 15 kilos on you is just going to be was, at you. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Her <laughs> legs were just oh, amazing, like these tree trunks. And my leg, I mean, I checked a few, but my leg the next day was black and blue <laughs> from that, her just uh, yeah. chopping down my leg. <laughs> that must have helped you, though, with competing in BJJ because that's actual fighting, and I don't consider BJJ yeah. actual fighting. As much as I would what? like to, it's 
it's kind of, it, it is a right answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like every time I say it's fighting, people correct me. So I've decided to give up saying it's fighting, it's grappling. You know, it's like there's a limit to the rules. But that's what you were doing is what fighting. Call fighting just because there's no striking, there's no fighting. Well, it's an interesting, I mean, if Craig, that's what Craig Jones is saying. How can I argue with Craig Jones? You know what I mean? It's like, you know, he's out there doing it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is it. So do you can you consider BJJ fighting? That's a good question. Like, yeah, it's a form of fighting. Mm -hmm. Like okay. fight, people throw punches, you block, you, you land on the ground. Mm. You're wrestling. Um, whether you're throwing punches in between the wrestling, you're still fighting. You're still engaged in the fight. All right. Whether that's out on the street, whether that's in a competition, yeah, you're still fighting the other person. <laughs> okay, I love that. Like, I, I would love that. I would love to be able to call BJJ a fighting sport. But the MMA yeah. people will shoot me down every time. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, <Okay>. <laughs> but I'm right there with you, Tegan. Let's call it. Let's please call it fighting because I I will definitely feel a lot more. A lot, a lot happier with what I'm going out there. It feels like fighting. I know that for the 14 years that I have competed, every time I'm out there facing another human, I'm scared out of my wits to face them because I know I could be badly hurt. So it must be some form of fight. You're absolutely right. Like it's fight combat. or fight kicks in 100%. Yeah. 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 And Keegan, tell us a bit more about One Purpose. Like um, you've had that club about five years now, a bit over five years. Is that right? So we just had our sixth year. Oh, yeah, okay. we just had six. Yeah. And what's that like, like running an academy with your partner? How's it been for you? Um, yeah, it's it's our happy place. Like no matter what's going on, we walk in the doors and it's just happiness. Like the people, everyone comes there for some purpose to relieve their day or uh, you know just engage with the community mm -hmm. say hi to each other um and yeah it's just it's a nice place to be it's it's nice to to have something like that to do every day I mean it's it's my job as well I mean I was balancing two or three jobs when we first started but now I'm just completely engulfed in one purpose mm. um so yeah i feel really really lucky to have something like that yeah that's your and point. It, it's growing constantly which yeah. is wonderful it, it sure is you've got a really strong women's team um we had francis on a couple of episodes ago and she talked a bit about that um can you talk about that at all like how you've managed to kind of get such a strong women's team there um i don't think i've i've really um done much in in a way of managing to get people there it's just um i think more and more women are coming into jujitsu um i think we create a really safe space for that mm. um we did have women's only classes. It's just really hard to find times that suit everyone because everybody is so busy. Like we have a huge timetable. I would love to offer the same thing for women only, but it's it's just trying to find those special times that everyone can turn up to. Mm. Um, but like having said that, we've got our adult intermediate class. It's one of our busiest ones for women to turn up to and sometimes we've got like 12 women in yeah. one class which is just wild <laughs> um my first class back after my surgery about six weeks ago I was teaching a comp class and there were three ladies and I was just like yes <laughs> hi ladies I mean hi guys too but <laughs> hi <Yeah>. ladies <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> you say yeah you say I think you haven't done a lot, but I actually, my, my theory on this is that because you are like, you're a very outgoing social woman in a leadership position at the gym. I think that's an, like, you don't really have to do much more than just be you and be at that gym and they're going to come. You know what I mean? Like, I think that the, you know, it creates a part of the culture. That's just a theory. I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you disagree. Yeah, no, I was going to say exactly the same thing. I think you've been quite humble, Tegan, because really <laughs> yeah. I think that having like, especially higher belt females in leadership positions, 
you know, that just drives, um, yeah. you know, female um, membership and, and female retention especially because, yeah, it, it is a hard it's a hard gig for us women out there on the mats. Absolutely. However, whatever yeah. belt colour we are, it's not easy. But, um, yeah, it seems like your team have a really good culture, um, the guys and the girls, and I always recommend people come up and visit you if they are up in Queensland. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we've yeah. we've got a really nice dynamic, I think, with with Bob and I. Like, um, we balance each other out on the mats. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to put it out. We're, we're coming. Him and I. Are yeah, come yeah. And if somebody hurts themselves. I'll be like, "Do you need a band aid? Do you want some?" <laughs> Like, are you okay? <laughs> and Bob will <laughs> say, drink a cup of concrete and get back out there. Like? Yeah. Oh, sometimes I can be like that, but yeah, we <laughs> balance each other out. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. It's really great. Yeah, so, you, you, out, okay, time for king on the mat. And I'll be like, oh, queen. <laughs> what about competing? Like, what about your students and what, with the, the culture of your gym and competing? You know, do you, is that is that a big thing? Is it like, is, is it a big part of one purpose's? Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we do it ourselves. We don't really push it for our students. Mm -hmm. I think they gain an interest from it by seeing us compete. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think quite a small percentage of people compete in terms of um, all of the people that just turn up to training every day. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's still quite a small percentage and it ebbs and flows. So, um, and again, that's just probably based on life and scheduling and other commitments. But sometimes we have so many people competing and sometimes we have very few. So it's just mm -hmm. really up and down. Yeah. We've definitely seen that at our gym as well. So I can relate to that. I thought it was something that we'd lost. But maybe you're right. Maybe it just ebbs and flows with the people who yeah. want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's nice to see quite a few, like the last few competitions locally, like Bob hasn't done them because he's had his eyes sight, his sight on some other things. But we've had so many people step up and want to compete, even mm -hmm. though we're not in there. So, yeah, it's nice to see. Yeah. yeah right. Awesome. We're nearly out of time, Tegan. Do you have any final words, any parting thoughts for our listeners? Not really. Well, you, you, you've definitely, you, oh, sorry, have I cut you off? <laughs> or you... No, you, you've asked me lots of questions. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you've opened my eyes to a lot of things today. You know, I really, you've come at things in a, in a different way to a lot of our guests. Um, and, like, I, I'm really, first of all, I love that you see, bjj as a combat sport aka fighting also like the fact that you talk about like when you go and show up at work the you know that environment is an amazing place to be and work and then when i reflect on going to training myself i realize there's very people very few people who show up with anything else like they check all of that at the door and they're there to train they're there to grow and learn and you're right it's an amazing privilege to be part of an environment like that and to work there you know, I'm yeah. envious of you for that. It's amazing. And and you have been an awesome guest today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank you me. so much. I'm not going to be going to World Masters, but I will hopefully see you again back on the mats. In I'm getting married. I'm going on my honeymoon at that time. Ooh. So I'm doing nice. something else. But I okay. will hopefully catch you in 2024. Well, you <laughs> back, on the, back on the competition scene, you and I, we can duel again. Look forward That's to it. Yeah. We can fight. Hey. Yes, <laughs> right. That's right. 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 World <laughs> Masters, you two need to throw down, I reckon. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, we can do it here in Australia. We don't even need to go overseas. We can do yeah. it here. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you again, Tegan. We'll have this out in a couple of weeks. If you could share it on your um, social media, that would really help to grow our audience. And, um, yeah, and keep, uh, keep rehabbing, keep improving, and, um, yeah, we'll see you on the mats. Will do. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tegan. Bye. Bye. See you.